and we have one of the eminent personality in front of us dr sankara narayanan sir he is currently the emeritus professor at the department of analytical chemistry university of madras his working area is uh, additive manufacturing of metals biomedical materials surface engineering corrosion tribo corrosion and nano material sir has obtained his uh, doctoral degree from the university of madras and is post doc from baylor university and he has been a visiting scientist under the brain pool program at uh, yonshi university seoul and he is a research professor at the department of dental med biomaterials he has published more than 200 papers and uh, he has uh, published 15 book chapters and he is the editor of surface modification of magnesium for biomedical applications and he is the co-editor of the book conversion coatings for magnesium and its alloys he has more than 8700 citations and h index of 50 and i10 index of 108 so we have one of the dynamic and eminent scientists in front of us please sir Good evening, everyone. So it is nice to be part of the induction program phase two. I am already a part of uh, induction program one, so I must be uh, extend my uh, thanks to uh, Anna University, particularly Professor uh, Professor Vel Raj, Vice Chancellor, and uh, Professor Uma Rani, the director, as well as the uh, her colleagues in the Center for Research. Uh, in the first part of the program induction program i have given a few talks particularly on manuscript writing as well as uh, the digital resources and uh, uh, the importance of reading and writing so here today uh, they want me to give us a different topic altogether because uh, uh, that uh, the video is already there in the website so people can see that uh, when they ask me to give a talk on something totally different the first thing that comes to my mind is on uh, ethics particularly on research ethics because nowadays there is a, a lot of uh, problems you know you might have seen the uh, block page of uh, retraction watch so there are so many papers published papers are being retracted and uh, there are so many uh, problems in the published literature has been cited so i thought that will be it is be relevant to talk about research ethics and in front of you because uh, having joined for research program so it is important for every research scholar to maintain uh, an ethical issue to follow an ethical guidelines okay let's go to the program so the first slide you know i have slightly modified the quotes of plato plato used to say that uh, no one is more hated than who speak who speaks the truth so i slightly modified is no one is more hated than he or she who talks about following research ethics because why i am saying that is it is like you know the, when you talk about ethics no it is like what is wrong what is right what is uh, what you should follow what you should not follow so this it is kind of advice you know we generally have the attitude of you no know, if somebody uh, gives advice to us then you know, we we generally hate us so that's why we want i want to put this slide you no know. so let us uh, see whether at the end of the program whether you like me or not okay ethics ethics is derived from the latin word ethos okay what is the meaning of ethos ethos means character okay ethos means character so ethos means character uh even when you are leaving the school okay you might have got the character certificate leaving the school or college and when you are joining for a job uh, you may be asked to produce a character certificate even if you are uh, going uh, applying for a um, higher level position and you want to go abroad or you want to go for a job in abroad so then you may have to uh, ask to produce a police clearance certificate from the pass uh, from the uh, from the nearest police station so everywhere this character you no know, even if you are uh, even uh, okay if people are looking for a better bridegroom now the first question is asked how about the character of the boy okay so it is it is mingled all through our life okay so only thing is that you know how you are going to follow the same how you are following to maintain the character during the research program during the research activity that's what we are going to talk about so ethics deals with the moral principles of 
about how a person conducts an activity. Here we are going to talk about research, so how you are going to conduct an activity, how you are going to follow the principles, moral principles when performing your research program, that's what. Basically, one should know the right things to do and not the wrong things, okay. And to follow good practice and not the bad ones, to be moral and not the immoral. So that is the basic thing, okay. So, as uh, Peter Stubert says that ethics is knowing the difference between what you have the right to do and what is right to do. So, what is right to do is more important. So, that you have to follow, that is what ethics says all about. So, when coming into research ethics, so general ethics we have seen, coming to research ethics. Research ethics involves application of fundamental ethical principles in performing scientific research. Okay. It provides the guidelines for responsible conduct of conduct in research activities. It is right, it is applicable, the, the, the following the ethical principle is applicable right from the design to the implementation of the program, okay, in carrying out the, the research experiments, particularly when you are using animals and human trials. So, you have to be very careful in when you are trying to use animals for your experiments as well as conducting human trials, you have to be very important to follow the ethical guidelines. And when performing, not only in performing the experiments, you have to avoid the scientific misconduct. What is scientific misconduct? Falsification of data, fabrication of data and plagiarism. So, that is also comes under the misconduct, scientific misconduct. Because many papers are retracted because of a, a enormous copying down of the other, other papers. So, plagiarism is also important. In fact, your PhD thesis uh, also uh, that uh, you after when sub submitting your PhD thesis, you have to um, subject your thesis for plagiarism testing. So, they will uh, use the software to check whether, uh, they, they, they have, whether you have plagiarized or not. So, this becomes a very serious issue now. Okay. It is imperative to educate all researchers as well as to monitor the progress on whether they follow the ethical principles or not. So, it is important that we need to give a proper education and uh, I really appreciate uh, the uh, Center for Research to conduct such programs, you know, induction programs, so that the, the research scholars are well informed and uh, uh, they are they, they are uh, they have been properly guided, and then they, they should have a committee to monitor the activity, research activity, so to so as to follow, so as the researchers to follow the ethical principles in doing the research. And not only that, but every institute should constitute an ethical committee, okay, to provide valuable suggestions because the researcher may not know certain things. They may be totally unaware, they may be, uh, they may be doing something, but uh, they may be, they are not aware that is against ethics. So, there is a, it is the importance and it is a um, uh, um, responsibility of the ethical institute ethical committee to provide valuable suggestions on ethical issues in conducting research. Particularly, when you, when somebody wants to do animal research, and we are using uh, animals for their research program, so it is essential to get a clearance from the ethical committee and they have to follow the rules of that committee. So, there are ethical principles in scientific research, there are many ethical principles, these are taken from the uh, book Ethics in Scientific Research by published by Rand Corporation in 2019. So, since it is taken from the book, I put it in, in quote and I have given the reference. So, that whenever you are, so whenever you are copying it, whenever you are copying it from a book, okay. So, then in that case it is not plagiarism. So, this I have verbatimly copied, verbatimly copied the exact sentences, exact phrases from the paper, from the book. So, in that case, you have to put it in quotes and then give that uh, thing as a reference. In that case, it will not come under plagiarism. So, first point is that you now, it is important that you now, we have to strive the best for our research program. We have to always achieve the best in our research program. But at the same time, you should keep in mind that the participants of the program, say for example, particularly in medical research, the participants of the program should not be at a risk. So, that is very important. You need to uh, achieve the best, best result, achieve the best possible outcome of your research, but at the same time, the participants in the program should not be under risk. So, that is the important point. Another important point is, as Professor Velraj, uh, Vice Chancellor, uh, uh, talked in that uh, inaugural, inaugural talk, he has mentioned about that whatever the research that you do, you should have a societal impact. Okay, so that's what is any, that also comes under the ethical principle that the researchers and and their research must contribute to the well-being of the society. That is also comes under an ethical principle. 
So whatever you do a research, you know, that should be some application point of view. You know, don't uh, stop your research only with the uh, with the synthesis and characterization part. You try to explore to the application area, and particularly that creates an impact in the society. That is very important in your research program. Conflict of interest. This is very important, particularly in medical data. Say, say for example, some pharmaceutical research where you are developing a drug, and uh, say for example, for COVID-19, you are developing a vaccine. Okay, that should not be any influence, financial influence or other influence, political influence. That should change your um, reports. So that is very important. So there should not be any conflict of interest when you are doing a research program. Okay, and there should not be any uh, incentives to be paid by to be paid to the participants. Okay, then the results are the results will be biased. So a researcher should be very careful, you no, know, in uh, in accepting any financial assistance from a company because the company may manipulate you. They can. Um, um, push you to the level that now that you change your reports. So, in, suppose that you are trying for a, to develop a particular drug and it is not effectively working, but there you will be facing an influence from the company that to change your report accordingly that that, that, that particular vaccine or the drug is working well. So that kind of influence we should avoid. So this will be it is always there. It is there. The, it is happening everywhere by the pharmaceutical companies. Okay. So the pharmaceutical companies that influence the doctors. To write to to give a prescription about their their about their, their uh, products, okay. That is also comes under the ethical uh, concept only. It is not it's not correct. It is it is unfair on the part of the company as well as on the part of the doctor to be influenced by a particular uh, company based on financial or materialistic benefits. Informed consent. That is very important. So whenever you are uh, doing a research activity, say for example, yes, you are taking a survey. Or you are uh, involving some participants for a medical research. Okay, it is important that the participant should know about the program very well. What sort of work you are going to do? If you are going to um, administrate some drug, so they should be totally aware of the drug and the, and their side effects also. Because in medical things, you know, side effects are very important. So they should the participant should know whether it has side effects or not, and they should compulsively know about the program completely. Then only you should be do. So that is very important that you should. Inform clearly, and they should participate in the research without any pressure, without any pressure, financial pressure or uh, some other uh, pressure. They should not be there. So that is very important, and they should be informed about the risk, what they are going to face. Suppose if they, if you are administered with a particular kind of drug, and after a few years you may experience certain um, counter effects. Okay, side effects will be because of the problem. Particularly in the case of steroids, you know, because steroids are very good in uh, as a painkiller. Because when you undergo an operation, you know, they will give uh, um, administered with the steroids. It will be very good, and you will feel very high, very you know th there is no pain in your body. But after some time, the steroids will have a lot of will create a lot of side effects. So. That whenever you are involving in developing a program or a particular drug on based on steroid, you should inform the participant that this will have an effect, side effect after this years. So that is important. That all comes under ethical principles. Another thing is integrity. Integrity is very important. Researchers should demonstrate honesty and truthfulness. There should not be any fabrication of data or falsification of the uh, data, or you omit an important relevant data. So that should not be there. And they should support the findings fully, eliminate bias in their methods, and disclose underlying assumptions. That is very important. There should not be any fabrication of data. There should not be any falsification of data. It should be reported in full. And if there is any, any assumptions involved in the development, then that should also be declared clearly, openly. Okay. No discrimination. So it is research and the research or, uh, outcome are the things. So it should be uh, uh, uniform or common for everybody. So there should not be uh, specific to one research. But you should not uh, deny benefits to a particular group. So there is there is no discrimination in uh, dealing with your research work. And uh, you should not exploit the participants because of your uh, financial gains. You no, know, when you are particularly this happens uh, uh, happening in medical research. Okay, there should not uh, exploitation of the participants. Okay, you should not take unfair advantage of the research participants when, when doing this kind of research. And uh, privacy and confidentiality. It is very important. Suppose uh, a participant is coming voluntarily to participate in your program. And you are collecting their personal data, and they are collecting their medical records, and they should have the control that who can access the data because you cannot open it and you cannot sell it to any other company or any other place because this is happening all around. No, so if you are typing something in Google and looking for some research, say for example, uh, I want to buy a mobile, and immediately you will be receiving uh, mails and other uh, uh, advertisement in the sites that you know about the mail program. So this is what happening because they are sharing the data. 
that someone is looking for something. So that is that information is given to the other third party. So in in the kind of research program, that should be you should maintain a confidentiality. They cannot give the uh, details of the uh, personal details or other health details of the of the participant to any other person. So that is very important. And professional competence, the researcher should be capable of doing things. Okay, they should acquire the necessary skills to perform an experiments. They should improve their skill sets. They should. choose the appropriate research methods statistical methods sample size to avoid misleading results so whenever you're doing research the reproducibility is important you should follow the, uh, the research methodology correct research methodology you should improve your skill set because in the beginning of your research program you may not acquire uh, enough skills but with time you need to do a lot of practice and automatically you gain the skill and then only you can able to avoid the misleading results so that is also important principle in ethical research and professional disciplines so researchers should engage in ethical research and promote ethical behavior through practice to be publishing and communicating in mentoring and teaching everywhere we should follow the ethical principles so that is important aspect okay now we i will talk about the honesty aspects honesty is very important in research activity i already said there is no fabrication of data and no misinterpretation suppose you are doing an experiment it is not coming in the way as you expected that is the most of the things it is going to happen like that we when we do the experiment we should uh, uh, conduct that experiment without any um, okay what do you say that no uh, without any expectations that you should come like this only okay whatever it comes you just take it the res- it is the responsibility of the researchers to do the experiment to collect the data analyze the data and give an interpretation why it is happening it might uh, give a positive result it might give a it might have no effect or it might give a negative effect all three things are possible let it be whatever it is it is for you as a researcher you should only understand and interpret the result why this has happened suppose it has gone it has not uh, gone totally out of the way then what is your expectation is let it be you explain why this has happened so that is what research program wants even even in your phd program we expect that you should understand the result how it is happening you should make a proper interpretation with a proper understanding and you should write explanation why it is happening like this that's all there you are, we are not expected to produce always a positive result so that you take a, a remove from your mind that should i i will always get a positive result i should always give an improvement uh, in my work i should always get a positive output it's not like that you are doing an experiment your job is to do an experiment collect the data analyze the data interpret the data and give it a proper explanation why that has happened that's all so the, you, as long as you follow that there is no need for you to fabricate to falsify any data because you are not expected to uh, make a positive output suppose you are say it is coming negatively you are expecting a positive you are expecting an improvement in mechanical property but the mechanical property is not improved okay i was expecting an improvement so what i should do maybe i can slightly modify my data and to show that acp is increasing that you don't do that's what ethics is talking about whatever is coming you take it as such analyze it it is not improving why it is not improving that explanation you write we were, we are expecting that it should improve but it is not improve why it does not improve that explanation is important for science that's enough okay so no misinterpretation of data follow honesty in reporting if you are writing a methodology write it clearly don't confuse the reader don't write a, okay instead of uh, you, if suppose you conducted an experiment at room temperature don't write it at 60 degrees centigrade or 70 degrees centigrade so no falsification no uh, um, you have to follow honesty in reporting in what the test protocol adopted you should not hide any facts that should clearly find out in reporting your results also you should follow the honesty okay in publication status many many students i have seen the cvs of many students no um, it is out of enthusiasm i don't say it is a totally wrong thing actually it is out of enthusiasm what they do is they put the title and then put communicated so don't put the communicated unless otherwise you have communicated that uh, uh, to a journal and many people i have seen that now they put a, uh, a few number of uh, titles and they said put uh, under preparation see this all comes under ethics see they are doing it with the uh, out of enthusiasm I'm not saying that it is uh, no uh, they were totally unaware of these things so i'm telling so this all also part of that uh, honesty okay and we have a moral responsibility not to deceive our colleagues and collaborators the sponsors and the funding agencies as well as the public so 
we need to follow the respons moral responsibilities and conduct the program. And as Benjamin Franklin said, honesty is the best policy. So we have to follow honesty in whatever research activity and other activity that we do every day. So I was talking about you know following honesty and there is no fabrication of data. Why that is you know we have been forced to fabricate if at all. I am not telling about everybody. So if at all if, uh, if I have to forcibly do some manipulation or slight adjustment in our result, why we have to do that? Because we are not following things in a proper way. So how to do certain things? Okay. So this I again in the consideration for research methods. First we should see the compliance whether we are adopting the correct methodology. Because choosing a wrong methodology will lead to a wrong result. So then there is no point in getting a, a beneficial result or positive result. So you have to see whether you are adopting the correct methodology in your, in your program. Okay. And appropriateness. What is appropriateness? Whether your sampling is proper. Okay. Whether the experimental conditions are properly maintained. So you suppose the, the humidity should be maintained at 65 percent relative humidity. Suppose you are, you are conducting at 45 percent or you are conducting at 100 percent relative humidity, then your results may go wrong. Okay. Proper sampling is important. How many times you are, how many samples you have collected for analysis and how many times you are, uh, we are repeating the number of iterations that you are conducting. That is also important. So, and adequacy. Sample means how many samples? How many number of iterations that you have carried out? That is also important. We cannot conduct only once and then you expect uh, that uh, the result should be uh, coming pr uh, perfectly. And transparency. That no, again, openness is very, very important. We should be open okay, and to share the data. And authenticity, validation, adopting multiple methods to validate the result, not only performing only one experiment. You have to do a variety of characterizations so that to confirm and validate your result so that your results are authentic. So that is important. And reproducibility, you have to check the reproducibility of the results. The one time is not enough, you have to make sure at least two or three times you do the experiment, you make sure that the results are reproducible and uh, uh, there is a precision in your thing and uh, not, there is not much error, you have to give the standard deviation values, all those things you have to follow in doing the experiments. Carefulness in research activity. Because why I am insisting on this, uh, these points is that you know, as long as you follow these uh, uh, methods, you, know, it is, you can be able to avoid the errors and mistakes in, your, in, your, in reporting your results. No negligence in performing experiments. The first thing starts from that. You no, know. okay. The temperature is mentioning measuring. Okay, it is 40 only. It has to come 45. Okay, let me start. So you are first thing you are avoiding that you are not following the. Uh, experimental conditions properly. So it is a negligence on your path in doing that experiments. So no negligence in performing the experiments. Say for example, if you are doing a filtration, okay, only 50 percent is filtered. Okay, let us let me throw out the remaining thing. Because you are in a hurry to complete the program, you are hurry, hurry to complete, the, go to the next class. Okay, so don't do that. So it's a general advice. Now keep the workplace neat and tidy. Always keep ready the necessary tools. Whenever you start an experiment, you need to have the right tools because working without the right tools is not a good idea. Okay, say for example, if you are working with the autoclave, okay, you have a small autoclave or a bigger autoclave, then you need to tighten it properly. So you need to have the spanner. Without spanner, you don't start an experiment. Suppose you are doing with some electrical uh, things, you need to have a, a multimeter. So all those necessary tools you need to keep before starting the research program. And calibrate the instruments and accessories. Say, for example, if you are using a thermometer, okay, and you are uh, using the thermometer to measure the temperature, make sure the thermometer is calibrated, whether it is showing the right result, whether the temperature measure is correct or not. You are using a furnace, means you have to calibrate the thermocouple. Okay, whatever the digital display is shown, may need not be correct. That should be calibrated properly. Every year, the furnace and all, you should be furnace uh, thermocouple and all, you need to calibrate every year. Okay. So somebody has purchased 10 years before this furnace, I am still using it. It might show 50 degree or it might show 100 degree. That may not be exactly 100 degree. It may be 85 or it may be 105. So that might influence your result. So maintain, calibrate the instruments and accessories and maintain the experimental conditions properly. So these are the important things, you know, with which avoid the negligence in performing that experiments. Long the research activities. This is many research scholars are not following. Okay. So that's why I am telling to you. You need to have a logbook. Yep, logbook is a must for every researcher. So whenever you are entering the laboratory, you are doing that experiment, you should log in your logbook. Okay. Give a unique identification number for every experiment. 
even if it is not working okay you are trying an experiment it is not working okay fine but you give an identification number and write down that i have that tried this and it is not working write down that is very important and every experiment and every sample should be traceable at any point of time don't throw away something is not coming out don't throw away keep the sample keep the experimental details write the remarks that i have done like this it is not working log book is very very important because the traceability is one of the point that we uh, talk in about you know iso 9000 standards okay traceability traceability is very important we need to keep say I, when i was in national metallurgical laboratory as a scientist we, we used to do chemical analysis for material metal samples and we need to maintain the samples for at least 6 months and we need to have a clear track record of what is the sample at any point of time you should be able to pick up the sample and re redo that analysis and co confirm to the auditing so that is very important traceability is a very important factor and in fact once i interacted with an auditor and i said you know uh, i hate writing log books why i should because i am wasting a lot of time in writing the log book anyway i am doing the experiment i am trying to getting the results and uh, i am putting it logging it in the test report and we are giving certificates to the customer so what is the point why i should write a log book is it necessary so the auditor has given a very good explanation he has given uh, he has explained a scenario there are two different companies working on a similar uh, development and uh, one company has started filing a patent about the development so the other company uh, suppose that they are doing already much before this company so it is their idea so they should also be given the equal credit okay so what is the proof what is the proof you have done and the judge has asked to produce the log book you bring the log book and produce it in the court that is acceptable as an evidence so based on that the company was given yes they have also done from this date so they also have a credit to the development so log book is very very important it is even considered as a uh, evidence in the court okay so log book is very important if somebody says that no that is the only evidence that you have worked in the laboratory because finally you are submitting a thesis in the form of a uh, nicely typed report laser uh, print out report okay whether that actual data is there in the log book or not nobody knows no one is verifying so i am not blaming but at the same time i am telling about the importance the log book particularly the observations whenever you are doing the or research work observations are the key you write down the observations any uh, suppose you are doing an experiment any every gas evolution is there any effervescence is there any change in color is there everything you record because that is very important when you are writing the interpretation when you write an interpretation okay uh, something like that so if, 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 if this is the case then there should be a gas evolution yes i remember that i have recorded that there is a gas evolution so this explanation is correct so these inferences are very very important writing the log book and uh, noting down all the observations you may think that it is very very insignificant but that may be an important uh, the, uh, aspect when you are writing the thesis so never uh, underestimate the observations observations are the key so record all the observations record all the details including sample weight suppose you are taking about 0.2 gram weight so i am taking 0.2 gram is that i very well know why i should record but you should record because why i am saying is accidentally instead of 0.2 you might have added weight 0.5 by talking to somebody and so okay i did okay i added but the results may be different why the results may be different suppose if you could return the uh, weight instead of 0.2 or 0.5 you know oh, yes i have added more because of this this has happened so every little little things are very important you know don't that critically evaluate your results and findings and compare with the published reports you are getting a result say for example thermal analysis or particular sample is decomposing at about 650 degrees centigrade okay then you take the re published result what the other what the other people have got you compare with your results with them if there is a change you know why there is a change that you analyze it and if you don't understand it properly you discuss with your peers you discuss with the experienced people there may be many uh, many professors available who have already done that work so you can discuss with your peers so these are important things in research activity so this will help you to eliminate your errors your uh, uh, the chances of doing any wrong things okay as long as you follow follow things in a proper way then you need not worry about other things openness in research now we have to share the results it is one of the important point now in publication that you know 
the raw data should be available for sharing. Why are they are asking that? Many publishers, uh, publishers are insisting that the raw data should be shared. So why I should share my raw data? Because you are reporting a methodology in doing an experiment and somebody is following the same methodology and they are trying to reproduce the same work, same result. But unfortunately, their results are totally against, uh, in, a, in, a, in a totally contradicting way they are getting the result. In that case, they may report that you know, I have followed this methodology but I am not getting the synthesis. So they say for example you are uh, preparing a graphene oxide or something like that or some metal oxide. You may say that you know, I could be able to prepare by following this methodology I could be able to prepare some nano sized zinc oxide. You may be following the same methodology but you may be not able to get a nano size but in micron size. The same zinc oxide but the particle size is totally different not uh, comparable with your result. So in that case they ask you to reproduce uh, um, to share the raw data how you have exactly done so that I can also be able to do. So a researcher should at any point of time should be ready to share the raw data that they have generated in the laboratory. That is one of the requirement now for publication. So sharing of the results is very important and what are some of the tools say for example if you use a software say for example image J software that you could able to uh, analyze a particular program say for example to determine the porosity or to determine the uh, say uh, some other defects in the in a, in a CM image so that you can be able to do that share it resources what are the resources that you have used and suppose the some other reviewers or something say they suppose they give a critics critical remark so be open be open to accept that critics so then only you can able to improve first you should accept whatever the mistake that we have got so then you can able to improve our research activity and explore new ideas based on the discussion with peers. So you always have a contact. You develop a network with your, uh, uh, your uh, with researchers working in your area. So that is uh, very helpful to discuss your, uh, um, to clarify your doubts, to discuss a lot with your with their experts. So, so can you can able to improve. You can develop new ideas. I was talking about sharing research data. So what type of what is the research data and what type of data? So data may be even a, an, a document file. It may be a molecular structure, it may be a presentation, it may be an audio file, it may be a video file. So, so many ways, it may be a spreadsheet, there are so many things, everything is considered as a data. You can share with the, uh, with, the with your research group, with your research uh, um, um, network that you can be able to do that. So, there is encouraged, generally data sharing is now uh, very much encouraged. So, what are the advantages, you know, this is published by Springer. So, the benefits for the individual researchers is, First thing is that you know you are increasing the available resources. So many resources are available. If everybody start sharing the data, it's and you may get very good recognition for your output, and you can increase that impact factor, improve, increase the visibility factor. The visibility factor is very very important. V factor, we call it as V factor. So like uh, how the H index and I index and other things are there citations. So the visibility factor should is very very important. So you should always visible to your research uh, uh, group, the people working in your area. So that you know you can, uh, I encourage you to participate in, uh, become a member in uh, uh, ResearchGate and LinkedIn and other things. So that you constantly share whatever the news in your, in your, in your, uh, in your area of research. Some developments are going on, you write a, write a block about your thing. So you, you always be visible, okay, even when you are writing, when we are writing projects, you know, we say that uh, one of the important point that you know, people should recognize you by tell, getting your name itself, by reading the name itself. Oh, this I know this person is capable of. So that visibility factor that we should bring in. The, so that is working now. It is like you know you have to promote yourself. You are advertising yourself. Okay, like a Chhatrapati Shivaji, like that. Now you have to promote yourself. That is very important today. So but for, but for the benefits of the society, you know, they could be able to uh, get a lot of information about the recent developments. Okay, suppose you are developing a sensor in your laboratory. Okay, which could be able to, uh, yesterday we were talking, I was talking about a student, they were telling that you now um, some wearable sensor, some wearable electronics sensors uh, that could be able to monitor um, acetic acid and that is they are using is uh, to identify the, uh, for, for diagnosing um, diabetic. Okay, I, I don't know exactly the technical features of it, but I could be able to see that okay, there is a, the, some researchers are working in an area that they are developing a wearable device using which I can able to monitor my uh, sugar levels on an everyday basis and so that I can have a constant control about my, my health. So these sort of information from the public societies will be important. So you need to share unless otherwise you are, you are not sharing that other people will not know. 
So, sharing your research data and this is very important. If you look at that, you know, this is published by Wiley, the, as in the form of a poster. So, the, the, what is the motivation for every researcher for sharing data? Okay. So, many people say that it is because of the public benefit. Some, they say that it is for journal requirement. Okay. So, many uh, things that people are having, certain motivation for sharing the data. Okay. There are some restrictions also. People may not willing to share. Okay. So, if you look at the whole world population now, some of the selected countries, say for example, um, in Germany about 55 percent of the data they are sharing. Okay. In US is only 46 percent sharing. Overall throughout the world report, people 50 percent of the people would like to, researchers would like to share their data and 48 they do not share their data. There are some apprehensions also in sharing the data. So, if you look at the reasons why researchers are hesitant to share their data, it means they are uh, very much concerned about the intellectual property and confidentiality issues. And uh, uh, many people say that my sponsor or my institution uh, is not insisting on that uh, data sharing. And many people feel that I am concerned that my research will be scooped. This is my idea. So, if I start to share my idea and, uh, and the results that other people may steal. So, I do not want to share. This is the main apprehension by, by many main researchers. But it is not like that. Okay. And many people they say that my, my results may be misused. They may steal my result and then we can use it actually. And uh, some says that it is insufficient time or researchers are, are funding. And some feel that I really do not know where I have to share the data. Okay. So, there are many um, journals are available nowadays. They are publishing only the data. It is called data in brief. And the journal names is called data in brief. There is no need for you to write any explanation or uh, supporting evidence in the form of XRD or TEM and other things. Just you have to take the collect the data and publish the data as such. It is called data in brief. Because now data science is picking up. People in uh, now working on artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning. So, everywhere, it, this, these areas are twenty everywhere. Okay. So, they want data, meaningful data, data, reproducible data, meaningful data, so that they can be able to uh, make some useful uh, information from your data. So, that is data is important for everybody. So, we need to share the data. Okay. We need to share the data. Of course, with, uh, with the proper uh, uh, recognition for you that you have reported with the proper record that you have recorded things, all those things it is required. Transparency in research is important. Be open to elaborate your methodology whenever you are asked to reproduce or asked to explain and uh, you have to clearly given what is the type of materials used. If any theoretical work means any assumptions that you made in the theoretical work that you need to explain it and what is the basis of analysis all those things. The transparency is also an important factor. And suppose you are using animals, you want to use animals in your, uh, in your experiments. Okay. If you have to use animals then we have to take care of them properly, it is very really important. And the experiment should be properly planned. It is not other laboratory experiments, like chemical experiments that, okay, if it is only chemical, it is all right. If, we, if it goes wrong, this does not matter. Okay. It is not like that. So, the experiment should be properly planned and avoid any unnecessary experiments. Because most of the times, we, you, you are going to try uh, testing your drug. And if you are giving overdose, the animal will die. I have seen that. Now, when I was working in Korea, I was in associated with the, with the dental school and uh, we have implanted a, a magnesium wire, magnesium, we have developed that magnesium for a degradable implant, magnesium based uh, art wall stents. Okay. It is a degradable thing, it, uh, there is no need for a second surgery, it automatically stays in the body and then after some time it will be absorbed in the human body. So, that is the advantage of the, this magnesium based degradable implant. And uh, to test it that uh, it is um, effectiveness, you know, we use uh, um, rabbits, we use implant a small magnesium wire with the different type of coatings and then we implant it in the rabbit. What happens is out of the eight rabbits, at least three will die. Okay. Many of the, the animal could not be able to uh, withstand. Okay. There will be a lot of rashes, there are a lot of uh, uh, problems it will undergo, there is undergo trauma. So, it is literally like crucifying the animal. It is literally like crucifying the animal. If you look at that, see the, it could not be able to tolerate the pain. Okay. So, it is literally crucifying the animal and then killing it. But you need to generate some research data so that you, you can develop a, a, an, an implant, heart, heart wall stent that you can develop. You need to study that. But 
we have to be very careful and because whether you're saying a wrong choice of treatment is another form of crucifying if you if you don't choose you know because if i use a 1 mm thickness wire then the amount of metal leached will be to some extent suppose instead of that i am using a 5 mm wire so the amount of metal leached will be very high so that animal cannot able to tolerate the toxicity you know, that from the leached metal so we should need to careful we need to careful suppose if it is a drug how much dosage yeah. ld50 value they say how much it can able to stand stand beyond that if you give then it will immediately die okay uh, we cannot say that it is only an animal now animal activists are, activists are there everywhere you cannot uh, uh, they won't allow even allow you to run uh, uh, your laboratory they will make a beach they say sage huge dharna okay this is not happening in india but it's happening everywhere so as far as you are conducting the animal experiments you should be very very careful you have need to proper take care of that animals etc and before starting an animal experiments it is necessary to contact the ethical committee university ethical committee to you have to get a clearance you have to submit a correct clear proposal what exactly you are going to study have you have a prior knowledge about about the about the type of material and uh, uh, how you have to handle that animal everything you should write it in the proposal get it get a clearance from the ethical committee then only you have to start that experiment it is not you are doing the experiment and finally you say that you know i have submitted the paper it is not like that you have no right to start even the experiment animal experiments without getting a clearance from the ethical committee of the concerned institutions okay this is a bronze statue now there is no point in uh, no this uh, no, give me making statues with this because the style nowadays no okay so the this is a bronze statue of a mouse knitting a dna double helix this is in russia okay what it says you know it, the, the ideology is that it combines uh, both the image of a laboratory mouse and a scientist because they are connected to each other and serve one cause of development okay so there's no point in uh, now putting uh, uh, making okay uh, in anna university also we have a uh, statue it's not like that we need to follow the ethical principles so in talking about you know ethical following ethics in conducting animal experiments a group of researchers have conducted a study okay this is from researchers at mcgill university okay what they did they applied a painful stimuli to mice by injecting noxious noxious chemicals particularly acetic acid into their abdomens causing them to what will be in severe pain on the test floor they also put the mice on hot plates imagine they put the mice on the hot plate they clamped metal binder clip on their tip of their nails tails and inflicted nerve injury okay they intentionally subjected these mice to various levels of pain for what to study their facial expression whether this study is really essential or not to tell to study their facial expressions they are doing all sort of things they are injecting uh, chemicals and they are putting binder metal binder clips on their uh, on the tip of their tails all those things they are putting and most importantly you know these mice were kept alive for more than 2 weeks after the experiments without giving any pain relief so it is literally crucifying and shamelessly you no know, nature methods has published this paper so what is the uh, ethics of the publication you know publisher why you should publish such a method such a such a, the findings you know in your in your journal okay so publisher also should follow certain ethics that certain result they should not publish so it is a form that you no know, you are uh, uh, giving an advice to the researcher don't do such type of experiments okay unless otherwise it is required i don't think you know in any way that you no know, studying the f- uh, facial expressions of a mice is useful okay for that you need not crucify these animals so this is very important you know when you are conducting animal studies it is very important okay so that's why i'm asking you whether you want to choose this mouse or this mouse which is better you choose okay good scientific principles following good scientific principle is important for every researcher so that you no know, he can follow that research ethics in everything always observe professional standards this is published in a uh, uh, university from germany okay practicing strict honesty and openness respect the intellectual property of others so others you will your colleague may be doing an experiment so you should able to respect that experiment you should not try to you know uh, poke your nose inside and then try to take some ideas out of that people are doing it okay 
observing ethical standards whenever you are carrying out uh, the, all the experiments and documenting the results this is also important okay all the experiments should be properly documented with the, you have to give a unique sample id identification number you need to uh, properly store the sample with identification number you need to write uh, remarks about the experiments what uh, what is the experimental condition what are the observations all those things you should need to properly document this is a good scientific practice and safeguarding and storing the primary data that is very important that's a raw data you should always keep it keep a record take a backup so and uh, consistently and rigorously questioning one own finding you yourself have to ask whether i am doing in the right path whether the plans that the, the idea that i have is uh, will be useful it whether it has any useful impact on the society all those things they need to ask and continuously change and uh, scientific publication as a primary medium through which scientists given the account of their work so you need to publish publication is very very important in, the, in my earlier talk also i said the important idea to publish is to is the dissemination of knowledge people should know okay so so whenever you are making some report i could able to use that uh, uh, finding and then make further development so that is also important so the purpose of publishing is dissemination of knowledge and not uh, uh, individual uh, materialistic benefit we talk about misconduct in research okay mainly it is the fabrication or falsification of the data that is the main misconduct and the second thing is plagiarism so these things are the major reports that you know there is a major misconduct in uh, in scientific research only these things are coming up of course follow you if you are for you cannot follow some unacceptable practices and you cannot do some misappropriation of funds use of prohibited chemicals and violating ethical standards so these are the things but the most uh, thing is reported it's falsification and uh, fabrication of data and the plagiarism so these are the main things and willful failure to comply with the requirements so there may be a written procedure to follow ethically you follow certain procedure ethical principles uh, to when you are handling animals experiments and all so you should follow the requirements properly so if you analyze it why there is a scientific misconduct okay if anybody is involving in a kind of misconduct you know where and all it could happen so mainly it is happening in writing research proposals because you are not planning in advance okay most of the things you know we start only after the advertisement is issued in the uh, journal or a newspaper or some other uh, scientific uh, uh, web pages okay so we don't have enough time to complete the proposal they might have given about one month maximum any any uh, funding agency say for example after 2 years you may have to write a proposal for csir for getting a um, senior research fellowships or after 3 years you are applying for a um, research associate so they are expecting you to submit a research proposal so for that you have to plan in advance if you are not planning in advance you don't get enough time so you, when you don't get enough time what do you do what people do okay Uh, i think in some other some proposals were available in somewhere so you just copy it and do it so that kind of misconduct is there because you are not planned properly if you could have planned properly in advance planned in advance then you could have written a very good proposal so that is very important in performing the experiments mis- mis- so you are not following the principles so you are not following the experimental condition properly so then there is some kind of chances of misconduct in reporting the research results i already said there is no need to get a positive result whatever the result is accept it and i report it as such so don't try to push that and i always get a positive result i always get a successful thing it's not like that and misconduct could also happen in peer review process this is happening this is happening peer review process because when we are submitting a manuscript to a publication okay it is sent for the reviewers and experts okay they are supposed to review the manuscript properly and then give a proper feedback and what need to improve in the manuscript and uh, what are the deficiencies all these things they they have to point out but in most of the times it is not happening because peer reviewers you know they are not supposed to do their job uh, they are not supposed to uh, be doing their job they are there are a lot of uh, uh, things and mishaps are going on so misconduct is also h- happening in peer review process okay so i will explain some of those those, those things publishing so publishing is important for you as a research scholar you need to publish as many papers as possible because that is going to open 
doors for future opportunities in the form of a postdoc or in the form of a uh, faculty position in universities, in leading universities. Now everybody is asking for a publication. So publishing is a must. And we have to follow ethics in publishing also, in publishing a paper also. So what are the points? The important thing is we need not, we should not fabricate any data while reporting the results. And we should not make any falsification of the data or manipulating the data okay, or creating the fake data. This is important. And uh, I already said plagiarism. There is no question of copying and pasting from other publications. Even if it is from your own work, it is not allowed because it is considered under self-plagiarism. So plagiarism is a serious issue. I will put some of the slides on that. Salami slashing is segmenting your results, you know, into some, say for example one big paper, you know, you segment uh, only XRD and ACM as one part and uh, the biological application another part. So these sort of small, small papers is called, it's not an encourageable thing. So don't do that. And uh, dual publication, submitting the same paper to, to two different journals at the same time is not allowed. This is against ethics. Okay, people are doing. Because they want to know, one, pay, one, one journal may take about uh, two to three months to tell about the result. Okay, say they want to submit it to them and some, somebody is accepting it, okay, other, other journal I to join. So that is not an acceptable idea. Dual publication is not encouraged. Inappropriate authorship. Authorship issues is going on. Okay, it is going crazily now. It is going crazily. Okay. And we should not give, we should give due credit to the contributing authors and we should not allow some unnecessary authorships. Okay. Gift authorship, okay, including the author in lieu of funds. Somebody is willing to give funds. This is happening. Okay, I can show a lot of examples of that. And ghost authorship, including name of an influential researcher. Just because he is well known, so our paper will be accepted easily. So I want to include that person as one of the author. So that is also an accept not acceptable thing. And manipulation of citation, giving undue citations to so many papers, particularly our own self-citation. So these are the things in... Uh, these are the ethics aspects in publishing. First, let us see about fabrication and falsification of data. I have collected all these things, points from the, uh, from the published literature, published uh, um, uh, in, uh, in Retraction, Retraction Watch Forum and other places. Okay. So this is a paper published in Journal of Materials Chemistry A in the year 2013. So the author has given the X-ray diffraction pattern of uh, two different compounds. Okay. So you look at the curve B and curve C and somebody has identified later and done this research on that uh, result and they said the curve B and curve C are one and the same. Okay. And the researchers have manipulated and uh, put a small peak only for the magnesium silicon. Okay. So subsequently serious issue was taken. So this is a falsification of the data, manipulation of the data. So they have analyzed it carefully. Now exactly it is following the same way, exactly the, actually it is only the one curve. They didn't get the proper result for the, uh, the, for the compound, but they manipulated the result. So these sort of things are going on and these sort of things are easily, now, now they have excellent softwares, image matching, pattern matching, A lot of softwares are available to identify uh, these sort of mischiefs. And many people, you know, they have a lot of forums and uh, people are mainly looking at these results and there, if there is any suspicion, they start to reporting and the people are working on that and then found, identify the problem. So it is very difficult to know, to cheat the people. It's very difficult. So they will easily find out. This is another thing. Okay, this paper was retracted. It was published in 2000, 23rd August 2019. Okay, this paper was retracted. So they will put us retracted. That means it is removed from the publication. It was accepted. It was published. Subsequently, it was removed. Why it is removed? So two different papers. Okay. If you are able to see, it is the same curve. Two different publications, it is the same curve. But the conditions are different. So they, have, they would have done, uh, obtained the results under only one condition. Okay, in the other paper, they have modified the conditions. So this sort of things is not acceptable. Okay, so that's why this paper was retracted. 
another example this paper was also retracted for data manipulation so what is the manipulation data they did i will explain so this is the cell growth morphological feature this is for the control sample and this is for some modification they have made mineralized input but one researchers have identified that both images are same and what they did is they have rotated 180 degree the same image and additionally added some features using photoshop so they said no okay, this area particularly uh, it's not clear so actually it is one and the same so what is they flipped that image and they put it and added some additional points using photoshop and uh, they reported that is uh, a difference in the between the control and the uh, some modified sample so so a lot of photoshop things are going on okay so i am putting these things that you can not to say that you can do all these things i'm saying putting the all these things that don't do all these things okay plagiarism is a very big problem okay so what is the definition okay this the entire thing i have copied from wikipedia so if you are copying and pasting it in uh, from some uh, resources then you have to necessarily put it in quote and give the reference otherwise it is considered as a plagiarism okay so this entire thing i have copied from uh, wikipedia and put so according to that plagiarism is the wrongful appropriation and stealing of publication of another's uh, another author's language thoughts ideas or expressions and representation of them as one's own original work okay and plagiarism is considered as an academic dishonesty and breach of journalistic ethics it is it is subjected to sanctions such as penalties suspensions even expulsion from schools or work plagiarism is not in itself is a crime but can constitute a copyright infringement in academia and industry it is a serious ethical offense so don't involve in plagiarism never copy and paste try to use your own ideas your own wordings your own thoughts try to do that there was a gross plagiarism report so this is a famous scientist nicolas pepas he is a famous biomedical researcher so he has uh, reported in uh, in uh, twitter so there is a gross case of plagiarism is that uh, there is a, they have published a paper in the year 2013 and subsequently another paper another review paper was published in 2016 and uh, it is uh, in total copy of the introduction section not by one word or two words it is for the entire paragraph two paragraphs at the report 20 lines okay so this is the first thing that they have published in uh, advanced drug delivery reviews in uh, 2012 or something like that and again 2016 another group they have published in saudi pharmaceutical journal so this was retracted based upon his uh, report that it is uh, a copy uh, or a plagiarism case so this is the thing ex- uh, d- data uh, text copied from 2013 paper published in advanced drug delivery reviews you can see that no it starts with the uh, the size of uh, orally delivered particles and the second paragraph starts with standard materials and ends with uh, uh, micro capsule droplets in pl uh, plga figures like that so this is the 2016 paper again the size of the de- orally delivered particles standard materials that and finally ends with micro capsule droplets in plga so it is the entire two paragraphs exactly copied from the earlier paper this is a serious offense that is why this paper was retracted the second paper was retracted because he has reported that they have copied entirely from my manuscript so don't do that plagiarism is considered as a serious offense very serious offense okay if you re- look at the reports you know on what basis papers published papers were retracted the first thing is the plagiarism they have taken uh, uh, what uh, some 500 or something like that so so many of the articles you know for th- about 354 articles is re- uh, uh, was uh, removed retracted because of plagiarism so there are other methods you know for data fabrication and other things the authorship is used other things so this is a serious issue this happened last week so i got it this uh, details from uh, linkedin so there is a uh, this university is in uh, uh, us in uh, i think in wisconsin state yeah 
So, one student was offered admission in mechanical engineering program, PhD program. Okay. In September 2000, uh, September 1, 2022, okay, the director of the graduate admission is issuing a letter to the candidate. Okay. It states like this. Your offer of admission to the mechanical engineering PhD program at our university has been revoked effectively from September 1, 2022. This decision is due to plagiarized writing sample you submitted as a part of your application. So what the candidate has done it, he has used the help of an agent to write the SOP, so statement of purpose. Okay. So that agent has copied from somewhere. So because of that, his admission is revoked. And they wrote again that as a result, you have been withdrawn from your course and your financial aid has been terminated. Imagine that you got admission in a good university and you got financial aid. Now all of a sudden it's gone. Everything is gone. It's doomed. Why? Why? Just because you have plagiarized the statement of purpose. This has happened earlier also. It's happened earlier also. Many universities now they are very seriously watching these things. Okay. They used to give assignments. Okay. They used to give assignments, professors. The first thing they see is not the result, whether it is right or not. The first thing they see whether it is plagiarized or not, whether it is copied or not. If it is copied, then you will be failed, even though your results are correct. So that starts, they say that starts the program problem. The copying starts the problem. It's okay. So they give importance, you know, even if you could not be able to solve a problem, it's all right. You try with your own methodology, we you try your own uh, ways of approaching. Even if it fails, they don't bother. At least you have made an attempt. But without making any trials, without making any attempt, you simply copy from some other, then that is considered as a serious offense. Okay. So, in India also, the University Grant Commission has issued a note in 2020 about self plagiarism. Self plagiarism is copying our own work. Suppose you are publishing a paper. Okay. And then you are writing another paper. It is the same work. It is about the same methodology. But you cannot copy your own the same methodology again. Then it comes under self-plagiarism. You cannot copy your own thing. So that is very important. Okay. So UGC has issued a note on uh, about, about self-plagiarism. And some of the experts uh, accepts uh, from, the, from the notice that reproduction in part or whole of one's previously published work without adequate citation and proper acknowledgement and claiming the most recent work as new and original for any academic advantage amounts to text recycling, also called as self-plagiarism, is not acceptable. Okay, even self-plagiarism is also not acceptable. What is text recycling or self-plagiarism? Republishing the same paper that is already published without due and full citation and publishing smaller work from a longer and previous uh, work without any citation. Reusing the data that is already used in a published work. Again, breaking up of the longer study into smaller sections. Paraphrasing one's uh, own work. That is not all, comes under self plagiarism And they have advised in this uh, thing that the vice chancellors and selection committees and screening committees, etc. Okay, they are advised to take decisions when they are, they, they are taking decisions in case of promotions or selections. Okay. In, the, in awarding the research degrees, they must evaluate applicants' published work to ensure that, that they are not self-plagiarized. So even in the, your thesis and comes under uh, scrutiny, that if there is any plagiarism, then you may not be able to get your PhD degree. So plagiarism, out of the 508 cases that was withdrawn from the things, no, 175 accounts for the plagiarism and 152 accounts for the fake data. So it is the fake data and the plagiarism are the major problems for, uh, in it, for lead to retraction of papers, that is considered as a major uh, scientific misconduct in these things. Again, this paper is withdrawn recently because of the substantial overlap above, um, uh, with the previously published literature. So that is considered as a plagiarism and then removed. And uh, here also, the integrity of the data, not provided the raw data. So I already said, now you need to, in, a, in case of any problems, you, need, you, are, you should be in a position to, to share the raw data. So they are not ready to provide the raw data. And there is significant overlap with the previously published papers. So on that basis, the paper was retracted. Another major problem, you know, providing fake email IDs of the corresponding authors and reviewers. This is going on now. Okay. 
So this paper was retracted recently. What happened is uh, these two authors, are the John Wang and uh, Yoto Song, are the corresponding authors. Okay, but the students have submitted this paper. They have included the, this professor's name as corresponding authors, but they have given a um, fake email ID. That is not the original email ID of their supervisors, because whenever you submit a paper. the corresponding author will immediately get an intimation in the form of an email that your paper has been submitted so they know but purposefully to hide that you know they have given a fake email id and submitted and uh, they have published it without the, the knowledge of the supervisors and finally they say that you no know, the supervisor they say that they we have no idea about submission of this paper and we do not agree with the uh, outcome or conclusions of this article and finally they the paper was rejected so this was done by the students mainly they they want to gain some advantage so they have published this paper without the knowledge of the supervisor so don't do that another problem fake reviewer report so what they do is you know you mention a reviewer name you are supposed to include the email id of the reviewer so reviewer name is some professor in some ex so and so university okay the email id is your friend's email id so when the journal is submitting for review your friend will get the paper for review so you yourself will write the report and submit to the journal and it will be published but the reviewer is supposed to be an expert it will not go to them so by submitting a fake email id email id they, they are started to do things and it has been identified the moment it is identified then it will be lead to retraction of the paper so lot of mischief is going on okay in the particularly in the in the peer review process and other things so it is a clear case of uh, manipulation of peer review process so that's what thing the paper was retracted <coughs> so this article is retracted so it gives the corresponding author information that does not belong to the actual authorship of this article so somebody else author uh, corresponding author uh, email is there and reproduction of data with appropriate consent and omitting the citation this is a serious offense okay you are taking a data from other people's work and uh, you are putting it as if that is your work or to you may use that for a comparison in that case you need to get prior permission to reproduce because this is a case you now when you are writing a review article you are going to compile the published results of many researchers in that case it is not only your results you are trying to use many people's result there is nothing wrong in it you can use it when writing a review because you need to compile you need to discuss about what are the developments going on but it is important for you to get prior permission to reproduce any published data whether it's the image whether it is a text whether it is a table or anything or a schematic you need to get a private permission so i will explain how to get a permission for that so but many papers uh, they are uh, using it without uh, the uh, without proper permission without even citing the original paper so that is comes under trouble so this is an example okay so this paper is published in 2011 in materials letters that uh, image is there and subsequently the other group of researchers it is not the same group it is some other group they published another paper in journal of materials chemistry in 2013 okay look at that image is the same image but subsequently when when there is an enquiry the author is telling that you know i have used that image only he agreed i have used that image only but i have not got the permission to reproduce so that leads to a major problem so they have you reproduce it from the materials letters paper without proper permission that is an offense now okay another article there is excessive duplication of text and images without appropriate citation so there is another image because of that the paper was retracted inappropriate authorship use of data without appropriate consent and omitting the citation this is a major problem people are uh, citing for retraction of papers again the same thing same problem so how to get permission to reproduce suppose you are writing a review article you want to write a review article you want to use somebody else uh, data in the form of a uh, illustration or in a table or some text so how to get reproducible to permission to get reproduce the illustrations and tables so all the illustrations schematics and tables published in books journals and websites are copyrighted so when you are submitting a paper and you are pa after your acceptance of your paper the publisher will send you a form called copyright transfer form so you have to fill the form and transfer the copyright to the publisher what does it means adu vandu sotha eludhi kudukra mari enode property idu enode data from today onwards i am giving the rights to you 
okay you are you are given the rights to them so you you have no right to use it without their permission without their knowledge that's what so without the copyright transfer they won't publish your paper so it belongs to the copyright it belong the copyright belongs to the publisher you are transferring the copyright to the publisher it is no longer your property you have done all the work in your laboratory you have generated the data you have plotted the data everything you did but now it belongs to the publisher it is literally that you have sold you sold the property then you you cannot use it as if your own okay so these are all copyright copyrighted things and reuse of such data without permission of the copyright holder comes under copyright violation so violation of copyright infringement copyright infringement okay getting permission to reuse such data is mandatory not only for publication in another journal or a book or website but also for the thesis or for the project report even if you want to, you have published a paper and you want to use the same image it is your image it is your result you want to submit your uh, include in your thesis you have to get necessarily the permission from the publisher before including it in your thesis otherwise it will be a copyright infringement permission to reuse warrants a written clearance and sometimes you may have to pay for reuse of the data because you are already transfer the copyright suppose you have done the work you published a paper you transfer the copyright i am writing the review i want to use your result okay the publisher will ask you need i need to pay 200 dollars to reuse the paper it is not his result it is your result i know but i cannot ask you you cannot give it to me even though we are friends okay you cannot give it to me free of cost you said like that because you already transferred so i have to necessarily buy it from him he will say you pay 200 dollars then only i can give you permission to use uh, the image in your review paper like that and you always follow the recommended procedures there is some procedure to get permission to reproduce say for example this is the journal you want to we want i want to use one of the image published in this article i am going to write a review article about uh, graphene based composites okay what what i have to do i have to go to the journal page and uh, choose the rights and content get rights and content it will be there in the every abstract page it will be there there so you select that the copyright clearance center it will go to the copyright clearance center and that will indicate what is the type of the paper everything and first thing you have to give i would like to what you have to do so i would like to make a i would like to reuse the data in my thesis or dissertation what you would like to use whether figures tables or illustration that you got to mention how many numbers of figures that you got to mention whether it is going to be in print electronic format or that you have to mention whether you are the author of the paper whether you will be translating and in case of you want a payment what currency you would like to make so all these things you have to enter and go for continue and they will ask where exactly you are going to use it okay so i am going to use it in a presentation as energy storage devices that i am going to present it in srm university during january 2020 like that okay so how many figures you are going to reproduce figures 2 and 8 from that article okay so then there will be the details what are the details so number of figures that i am going to reproduce all those details will come okay so they say since it is for only for a presentation they don't charge me anything the total amount is zero us dollars so you have to accept that contract you have to agree for the terms and conditions and finally order complete so what it says that thank you for your order this agreement is between shankar narayan tsn and elsewhere okay for using the permission for using the figures so this you need to keep it this you need to take a print out of uh, all the details and then you have to submit it when you are uh, uh, using it uh, in a, for a submitting along with your review paper that i got permission to reproduce these figures like that so this is the procedure we cannot use any published results without their knowledge without giving due acknowledgement and you have necessarily cite the paper where exactly it is taken okay I already told about uh, issues on compromised editorial handling and peer review process is going on. Okay, so this article is retracted because it is a guest edited issue, and uh, they have not done the peer review process proper, properly. They have compromised on the on the the base that you have to review the paper in properly, and there are some of the articles which are totally irrelevant, and uh, it is beyond the scope of the journal so and things. So it was retracted. so another thing is uh, this conference was held in india 
and uh, the entire conference proceedings was published by iop okay but what happens is the serious thing is they have retracted the entire volume not a single article they have retracted the entire volume of the conference proceedings stating that there is no credible peer review process the editors who are supposed to do a proper review process have not done so now there is no credible peer reviews and they advise that all the papers are potentially unreliable this is a very strong statement so not all the papers are supposed to be like that but they said all the papers are totally unreliable the editor review process was not done properly so the entire volume has been retracted okay and there is considerable citation manipulations all those things so i don't want to put the exact uh, place and the things so a lot of retractions you now plus one is one of the famous journals you now they are uh, doing a very big research on uh, published papers and now they are going to retract more than 100 papers published uh, during the last uh, few years so publishing is a difficult task you no know, it's like uh, making a high jump okay so what we many people normally do is you know we use our network i already told you no know, establishing a good network is very important for your research career so how people are using the network you no know? so from the network you name some of the people as suggested reviewers when you are submitting a paper so it will go and uh, you inform the reviewers inform the people that my paper will come you please provide a favorable reply okay so we are using the ladder and we are crossing across the publishing thing so that's what going on no okay so how to stop this problems in the peer review process so on research uh, on recent attempt has been made by a group of researchers they use artificial intelligence to analyze the reviewer report so when you are doing a review process you have to submit a reviewer report to the journal so they they will keep all those review reports so what they did is they collected all the review reports uh, from a uh, from submitted by many reviewers and they use a artificial intelligence program to identify some other things so based on that they are trying to establish the credibility of the reviewers whether they are doing it correctly or making they are following some unethical practices influencing somebody so all those things are they are doing it now the research is going on so if you look at the reasons for the misconduct in publications it is a lack of awareness first so we should be aware totally what is right and what is wrong what we should do and what we should not do all these things and the major point is pressure for publication by the supervisors as well as by the institutions now nowadays no I, i don't want to mention the college or the, or the place university one of the university they say that uh, every faculty member should publish at least eight papers per year i don't know how it is possible okay so because they have to do teaching also so after doing the teaching and uh, you have to publish eight papers per year it is a really difficult task i don't know how the management works out on a, on a such a scale okay but it is going to apply a huge amount of pressure on the people and many people pointing out that that the pressure they are feeling it is a starting point of many misconducts in publication because if the researcher is not under pressure is in general they are not likely to involve in any kind of misconduct they will do it properly the moment they feel a pressure that they have to somehow accomplish it somehow do it there is no other choice so they are feeling the pressure and that starts okay small small mistakes and going in a very big level so that is one of the reason that you know everything and looking for an advancement promotion and competition among the colleagues uh, that i want to make sometimes it is the financial things that you compromise the quality financial support you know you may get some financial things from that there is a recent uh, paper published in uh, in a journal in 2021 on the journal itself called research ethics published by sage publishers so it is uh, called as publish or be ethical and you know, publishing pressure and scientific misconduct in research so they have conducted a very big survey to a lot of people and uh, finally they come out with the outcome they said there is no correlation between unsatisfactory work condition and scientific misconduct it is not because of the lack of uh, facility or the work environment is not proper so that is misconduct scientific misconduct is not taking place because of that the misconduct is taking place only because of perceived pressure 
to collect the points. That is, you no know, for promotions and assessments, they need to score more points. They need to publish more papers. Because of that, the scientific misconduct is happening. So that is what their their survey result points being pointing out recently. It was published in 2021. Okay. There are many authorship issues. There is uh, that is also comes under ethical in publication ethics. So. Uh, Professor uh, Largo of uh, uh, US University and another Vijay Sankar of, uh, in a Twitter page, they have pointed out these things. How a person can in, qualify as an author? Okay. To qualify as an author, one should have actively participated in formulating the problem, in writing the research paper, and they should be prepared to defend the publication against the critics. Because the moment you submit a paper, the reviewer will come and give comments. So, as an author, you should take the responsibility to defend the, uh, the questions, the reviewer's questions. That, so, the, those only are qualifying to be an author. Who do not qualify as, as authors is those who have provided funds, those who have provided space for work, and those who have provided technical assistance, those who have supplied chemicals, materials, and accessories. Those who have coordinated and, uh, and collected the data, as well as the head of the department or institute. This is happening in some places. You now they necessarily follow the rule that you know the head of the department should always be an author of the paper, of all the papers submitted from the things. This is happening in some places. But generally it is felt that they don't do not qualify as an author unless otherwise they make a substantial contribution to the research program. This was published in uh, in Twitter. So what you see is that you no, know, many people, about 80% of the student and 40% of the academic staff do not really know what is uh, the qualifying thing for an authorship. Who should be the author? Okay. So he, he has pointed out who should be an author of a paper. So according to his views, the author, to qualify as an author, you should have substantially contributed to the concept and design, acquisition of the data and analysis an interpretation of the data and contributed to writing of the paper or revising it critically for important intellectual content and given final approval of the version to be published. He has used the word and, and, and. So all three points should be applicable. In some of the people, you know, they feel or they instead of and, they put or contributed substantially or contributed to writing or contributed something. So it is not like that. He feels that it should be and and not or always. So, Quali to be qualifying as an author, they should have made a significant contribution, unless otherwise uh, you, uh, one person is, does not qualify as an author. There is a lot of mischiefs going on. Okay. This is a paper published in uh, nanoscale research letters with a very high impact, about 4 points, something like that. And uh, I know that, you know, because uh, I am the admin of uh, the page, Facebook web page, PhD and postdoc positions. And uh, I have rejected this thing. But still, again, he has managed to push that. Uh, uh, it's like an advertisement. Okay, so it's uh, like you know, it's authorship for sale. Authorship for sale, like that patent authorship is also for sale. So he has put this advertisement in Facebook, say calling for co-authors participation. Accordingly, the fourth author's rate is eight hundred fifty dollars, like that. Okay, because he wants to include ten authors. The total number of slots available is ten. Okay. And uh, he has given the title of the paper, Conductive Gels, see the title he has given, Conductive Gels, Properties and Applications in Nanoelectronic Things. Okay. The same paper was published in Nanoscale Research Centers, Conductive Gels, Properties and Applications in Nanoelectronics with exactly 10 number of authors. Okay. So if you look at that, all the authors from different institutions and different uh, specializations. Okay. And you see one of the authors is from Department of Air Conditioning and Refrigeration. Another author is from uh, maxio, Maxillofacial Surgery from Dental Institute. So what it has to conduct, uh, what is the relevance? What is the relevance for authorship? So it is totally you know, uh, going out of the way. So that is what happening. So this does not come under ethics. They do not follow any ethics here. So, so this is another interesting uh, one PhD student has enrolled for a PhD program in Catholic University, Belgium. Okay. And he has worked with the two professors. And uh, subsequently, she left and joined in another institute. And uh, 
um, continuing her PhD program and she has submitted papers and published papers, two papers she has published. What, what happened is in the, pap in the papers, in her manuscript she has included the name of Frank Riedermix who is a famous cardiologist who is working at Catholic University Belgium. Later the professor has complained that I have no idea about the research work. The author has never consulted me and without my concern she has included my name. So for that the journal has retracted the paper. Published paper it was retracted. So it is important for you before publishing, before submitting a paper you have to get permission, you have to inform all the co-authors that I am submitting this paper. Without the knowledge of uh, the co your co-authors, you cannot submit any paper. Okay, that is very important. Because it is not only telling that I have uh, some, I am going to submit a paper and you are the co-author. You should totally agree with the contents of the paper. Because every author in the, cited in the paper is responsible for the content. Later you should not say, it is his problem, he has done some manipulation. I am not responsible for that. You cannot say, because you, you are also a paper, you are also an author. author. So you should go through necessarily what is there, whether you agree in toto with what is written in that. That is also your responsibility. So authorship is not a simple thing. Okay, somebody is saying that, okay, I will also want to use another author. It's not like that. You should go through the entire manuscript. You should agree with the, with the content. Okay, they might have written something nonsense. You may not agree. So that you should tell in, uh, earlier. I don't agree with that. In that case, I want to withdraw myself as authorship. So that you have to tell very clear. So there, was, uh, there is a committee called uh, Committee on Publication Ethics, SCOPE. You can see this website. A lot of cases going on. So one of the cases is uh, uh, suspicious response to authorship change request. So the paper is published, uh, or submitted something, or in the process of review, and uh, one of the uh, author is writing that, no, you, you need to change this author. You, you remove this author, you include another author. So that and all many journals don't permit. The moment you submit the paper, it is sealed. You cannot add or remove any author. It is finished. So before submitting itself, you have to decide. Okay, somebody wants to know, uh, the paper was uh, given some comments, and now I am submitting the revised manuscript. At this stage, I want to include two or three papers, two or three authors. That is not accepted. So whatever the authors do submitted during the initial submission is valid. This is another major issue. The paper is sent for review. The way reviewer is reviewing your manuscript and giving comments and along with the comments uh, and along with the comments he is saying that include these following papers. Those papers are the reviewers papers. This is going on. So every reviewer is insisting that you cite my paper. Okay, this is a problem and change of corresponding author, lot of things and this is another serious issue. Institutions are paying, they are willing to pay to be named on the papers. Okay, so I am working in Madras University, some institute, uh, suppose, this is only an imagination, suppose some institute is asking me, you put dual affiliations, Shankarnaran University of Madras as well as Shankarnaran this institute, you publish a paper, so they are getting a credit, the institute is getting a credit, for that they are willing to pay, this is what is going on today, this is against, against, against ethics, okay, so you know about, that, uh, about this girl, Russian, yeah, she is very famous, you know, there is a page called ACA Hub. If you know the DOI number, you can download any number of uh, papers. Okay, that is in principle against ethics. In principle against ethics. But we are going, we are doing it. Okay, including myself. I uh, accept my truth. So because now LCVR Wiley and ACS has filed a case and it is going on in the Indian court. So now they put at least the recent year, 2022 paper, it will not be available like that. But still all uh, uh, earlier papers are available. Okay, so, so some questions I would like to ask. Inclusion of your colleague name in a paper, okay, whether it is, when it is ethical and when it is unethical, can you tell? You are including your colleague's name as one of the author in your paper, whether it is, when it is ethical, when it is unethical. Yes. That's a good answer. If he has contributed, then it becomes unethical. If he has no contribution, and just because he is uh, he or she is your friend, no, it becomes unethical. So that you should remember that. So one of your friend is helping you to type the manuscript, okay, 
and another friend of you in another institution has performed some characterization for sample for you. So, will you include them as authors in your papers? Acknowledge, yeah, right. Because typewriting is not a, a major technical help, okay. And the characterization, this also to some extent because the characterization alone does not qualify for an authorship in principle. Okay, this is a question. You are operating an instrument, okay. You are breaking an accessory, say for example, a cubit of a spectrophotometer and no one is around, okay. So, will you report it to the supervisor or not? Will report. Yeah, I appreciate your honesty because that is important. Whatever happens, just report it, okay. So, you know what will be his response, okay. He will shout, okay, he may jump at you. So, that is happened, but we should be at least honesty in accepting our things, okay. You have done the experiment only once, okay, because of many things, because of lack of time or because of lack of facility, all other things. And you are submitting the manuscript and the reviewer is asking how many times the experiment was performed and include the standard deviation. What will be your response? You know that you have done only once, you do not have time or you do not have the facility. So, the reviewer is asking a question how many times you have done the experiment and include the standard deviation. So, if you have only one data, then you cannot get a standard deviation. So, what will be your response to the editor? If you say I have done only once, then they say you do it again and confirm the reproducibility of the results. Okay. So, that is the ethical way to do. The unethical way is that okay, add two more values and good the standard deviation and submit it to the reverse manuscript. So, you decide on that. So, it is already said, now anything images that you have to reproduce it with permission. So, do you recommend the use of animal experiments or human trials? What is your response? No. But without doing that, how you can, suppose in the case of a, um, a new kind of drug or a new vaccine, how we can go for it without uh, animal trial or human trial? Yeah, you have to follow that ethical principles and then try to do that experiments. So, wishing you all the best for your research career and I end up my talk here. Nowadays, uh, many WhatsApp images, WhatsApp messages are coming that uh, first author is free, third author is free. Will it be fine to publish the paper in that? No, that is an unethical way. Because, because you, you are just. Uh, if you want to do that, uh, in an unethical way, you can do that. Because nowadays, it has become a business. Yes, yes sir. While uh, joining in webinar, they are adding in one uh, WhatsApp group and sending uh, the free papers. That's what I put one other thing. You know, uh, there is it coming in. Uh, in Facebook, okay, many things uh, as our administrator also also removed many things also. They are selling patents, they are, pat they are selling authorship uh, in patents, they are selling authorship in uh, publication, all those things are going on. So, I do not advise you to. Book chapter, sir. Book chapter, book chapter will, will it be fine, sir? Anything. Unless, unless otherwise you have a significant contribution, it is unfair. And then, then we, we have, have to directly, directly search, search the journal, journal and we, we have, have to put it. Yes, yes, you have to do it on your own. You have to contribute to your own in some way. Okay. Thank, Thank you, sir. sir. As I said, because of the publication pressure. So many institutes, uh, uh, many institutes in Gulf countries, they are expecting, they are uh, giving a lot of funds for the researchers, but one of the requirements is they have to publish as many papers as possible. They could not be able to keep up with the pace. So, they could not be able to publish many papers. So, what they say is, if anyone is including, uh, willing to include our name as author, we are happy to give you some incentives as a part of the incentive, because they are giving incentives. So, just, just because you are getting some financial gains, people are doing. So, it is up to the researcher, you know. And as, what I am saying is, you no, know, as far as possible, trying to be, follow some ethical principles. That's all. Uh, thank, thank you, sir. sir. Any, any, any questions? questions? Okay, okay, see, see actually, actually we use it to call it uh, those authors, authors as ghost authors, author, yes. invisible yes. authors, who are not as uh, sir pointed out uh, in his uh, presentation, right? Uh, whether the author ca name can be added or not, right? Uh, you know very well whether uh, he is really contributed, right, uh, towards the publication of the article or not. You know very well. 
but, but as sir pointed out, out not only in gulf country sir it happens uh, in uh, our uh, state itself because uh, the survival it becomes very tough nowadays in uh, private uh, self finance colleges uh, everyone they talk about because everyone uh, they realize uh, the significance of nir ranking qs ranking so for which uh, the standard publications right uh, that plays a vital role so that's why many authors joined together but see number of authors nothing wrong you can go for 10 authors or 12 authors provided if it is a joint project joint project of right or your institution and other institution right uh, if they joined together right uh, and uh, your uh, see if uh, i have a project along with uh, iit and nid right uh, one uh, principal investigator and the core principal investigator here so minimum uh, six author by default uh, will come into picture for publication because see for any institute uh, when you go for publication right one principal investigator one core principal investigator must be there then uh, if, if i have one uh, phd scholar co investigator have another phd scholar so automatically the number of count uh, will go will go right nothing can see uh, unless uh, if it is not uh, a project of work joint project work so adding number of authors unnecessarily will create a lot of problems sometimes at later stage that will degrade uh, the quality of uh, your upcoming articles okay thank you sir uh, uh, your uh, presentation uh, really useful uh, for our scholars because uh, nowadays uh, the scholars are facing a uh, lot of problems uh, like uh, at the stage of submission of synapses uh, because of the paper publications i hope uh, this uh, uh, presentation uh, useful for you whether uh, which uh, uh, journal what are the research ethics Uh, towards the publication of your research outcomes right that is your research outcome right you have privilege uh, along with your supervisor to publish uh, in a standard uh, journal right so recently our center has taken lot of initiatives of publication towards uh, quality one journals right you will come so the to next uh, tomorrow uh, where i give uh, some uh, information with regard to the awards uh, recently introduced by our director right thank, thank you sir thank you very much uh, for your presentation as a token of our love and appreciation may i request our director uh, to present a moment to our speaker